everybody. My name is Joshua Karasak. I'm a winemaking specialist with Anardis USA, and this is a four-part series on dealing with sluggish or stuck fermentations. This first part is going to be about how we can deal with sluggish fermentations and what are the different causes, and it's also going to be about how we can acclimatize a fresh yeast population for a stuck wine. So here's some of the causes of sluggish or stuck fermentations. Inadequate nutrition in the form of amino acids, ammonia, vitamins, mineral sterols, basically anything the yeast need to conduct the fermentation. If we're limited in any of those uh, nutrients, then the yeast can, can struggle. Higher alcohol conditions, generally greater than 14%, can uh, cause problems for yeast. Uh, in general, yeast have uh, cell membranes that begin to um, become less fluid when the um, alcohol conditions go up. So the higher the alcohol levels, the more difficult it is for the yeast to ferment. Competition, either from Acetobacter or malolactic bacteria or other wild bacteria that are coming in naturally with the fruit. Uh, these bacteria can compete with the um, primary fermenter in the fermentation and cause a stuck fermentation. Uh, low ethanol tolerant yeast, so in a native yeast um, population, uh, generally speaking, there's usually some yeast that have low ethanol tolerance, and these yeasts might struggle when the fermentation becomes uh, more progressed. Accumulation of acetic acid, so either from Acetobacter, malolactobacteria, or from Saccharomyces itself. Uh, acetic acid can be an inhibitor of uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and so the higher the acetic acid levels are, the more difficult it is for, for yeast to ferment. Extreme temperatures, either high temperatures or low temperatures, or even big uh, temperature changes, uh, can shock the yeast and can um, inhibit a fermentation. So what's the difference between a stuck and a sluggish fermentation? In a normal fermentation curve, like we see in the blue line, we have a lag phase, a steep decrease in uh, the actual rate of fermentation, and then eventually slowing and, and becoming uh, completely dry. In a sluggish fermentation, we have an abnormal situation where and there's an inflection point and the rate of fermentation becomes abnormally slow. Um, so in this situation, we have a sluggish fermentation. When we have an inflection point where the fermentation completely stops or ceases to have any fermentation at all, uh, then that's a stuck fermentation. And generally speaking, a stuck fermentation is more problematic than a sluggish fermentation because with a stuck fermentation, you have a population of yeast that is no longer viable and no longer fermenting. And in that situation, you will have to acclimatize and add a fresh population of yeast to that uh, stuck wine. So uh, with a sluggish fermentation, we have the opportunity to be able to intervene and actually get a fermentation to complete, where a stuck fermentation is we have to acclimatize a fresh yeast population and uh, add that into, the, into the, the full batch. So I'm going to go over what some of the steps are for a yeast acclimatization. So generally speaking, you'll start with your stuck wine and a tank that is of equal volume, if not larger. We add a little bit of water and some inert gas to that empty tank. Then what we do is we add an equal volume of stuck wine, some nutrient, and sugar into that, uh, that second tank. Then what we do is we rehydrate a, a fresh yeast population, generally something with uh, higher alcohol tolerance and something that's fructophilic, so it's able to handle fructose levels. Um, so something like our Easy Firm 44 or our Firm WS are both good options for this. We add that yeast into the stuck wine, water, nutrient, sugar mixture, and we have a yeast starter. So that starter is going to ferment, and once, it, once its fermentation has basically decreased its initial bricks level by half, that's when we add a little bit more uh, stuck wine, so generally the same volume of stuck wine as our starter, and a little bit of nutrient-containing DAP, uh, something like our NutriFirm Advance, to get the fermentation to continue. We let that mixture basically ferment for another half bricks decrease. Then we add an equal volume of stuck wine to that um, to that batch, let that decrease by another half bricks, and then the full volume goes into the tank. Uh, and we let that ferment basically until it becomes completely dry. And we monitor it along the way to make sure that the bricks continue to decrease and that the residual sugar levels go down to zero. And we also want to monitor it for VA increases to make sure that the volatile acidity is not getting uh, too crazy. You can see that those steps are, um, there's a lot of steps involved, there's a lot of time and energy that goes into a yeast acclimatization for a stuck wine, but it's really necessary in order to make sure that you are able to finish a fermentation, because if you just throw a population of yeast, fresh yeast, into a stuck wine, uh, they're going to get stressed out and they're not going to be able to actually uh, finish the fermentation. 
So uh, we have to go through yeast acclimatization if we have a stuck wine. If we if we basically intervene in this window of opportunity between when a fermentation becomes sluggish and when it becomes stuck, then what we can do is actually prevent a stuck fermentation. Uh, so in many cases, uh, we have seen uh, two enological tools that are very helpful for this situation, the Nutrifirm No-Stop and the Inerta Step micro -M. And what I'm going to detail for you in the next two videos is how we can use these two tools uh, in order to prevent a stuck fermentation. So go ahead and click on the link uh, to continue to part two if you want to uh, continue learning about how we can use Nutrifirm No-Stop to prevent stuck fermentations. Mm -hmm.